Let's go ahead and take a look at this problem we're going to be utilizing work. So what this problem says is we have a crate of breakfast tacos with a mass of 10 kilograms and it's pulled up a, uh, pulled up a rough incline with an initial speed of 1.5 meters per second. The pulling force of your buddy is 100 newtons and is parallel to the incline which makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. The coefficient of friction is 0 0.4 and the crate is pulled 5 meters. So let's kind of sketch out our situation real quick. We've got a crate of tacos. I've got a mass M of 10 kilograms, and so my M is 10 kilograms. It's pulled rough up a rough incline with an initial speed V naught, or V naught is 1.5 meters per second. Then I have a pulling force, a force F, that is parallel to the incline, where the force F is going to be 100 newtons and it makes an angle with the horizontal of 20 degrees and we have a coefficient of friction so it is rough we have friction that is equal to 0 0.4 and the crate is pulled a distance d of 5 meters okay so let's go ahead and one by one systematically go through this in part a how much work is done by gravity and then here, how much work is done by your body, how much work is done by friction, and so forth. And work, as we talked about, is going to be your force times distance. And what better way to see your forces than by drawing a free body diagram? So let's go ahead and do a free body diagram to this. This one's not going to be too, too crazy. Okay, you have mg going straight down. You have your normal force going perpendicular. You have friction that it's opposing motion, so because this is going up, friction, U times N, is going to be pointed downwards. And then finally, the only external force that I have is that force of our buddy that's going up. Um, because this block is moving up the ramp, I'm going to put positive X parallel and going up the ramp, positive Y perpendicular. And so every force is good except for gravity. So the Y component of that force, mg cosine theta. And the x component opposite of that angle is mg sine theta. Okay, I know I went through that fast, but it's a pretty classic free body diagram. If you still have trouble with that, definitely check out those videos. Okay, but now we can go through this. Part A. What is the work done by gravity? So work done by gravity is going to be force times distance, but it's going to be the component of the force that points in the same direction as motion. Notice how since my motion, my distance, I'm traveling in the x direction, I take the x component of that force into account. Also notice how it's opposing that motion, right? mg sine theta is pointed downwards, but this is moving up. So this is a negative. So that's why it's going to be negative. If it opposes motion, it's going to be a negative work. Right? Negative work will oppose motion. So negative mg sine theta times the distance d that it traveled, which will be a negative 10, 9.8, sine of 20 degrees, times the distance traveled, which is 5. So let's go ahead and throw all that into the calculator real quick. I've got a negative 10 times 9.8 times the sine of, we'll make sure I'm in degrees, yep, sine of 20 degrees times 5, and I get negative Let's call it 168. Let's just all deal with whole numbers. It's going to be a negative 168 joules. Let's take a look at part B. Part B said, what is the work done by our buddy? What is the work done by this force F? Notice how this F is going to be helping that motion. It's pointed in the positive direction of that motion, and it's already in the same direction. So this is literally just going to be that F times D which they said this was 100 newtons times a d of 5 meters, and so that would be 500 uh, joules. Let's take a look at part C. What part C says, it says how much work is done by friction. Okay, well work done by friction is going to be this force, that mu times n, but notice how that mu n is opposing that motion. So that's why it's going to be negative, so the work done by friction will be negative will be a negative mu times n, where, again, on a ramp, normal, oh, here we go, on a ramp, n is going to be mg cosine theta, in general, and in this case it is, negative mu mg cosine theta 
times that distance d that it traveled. And so this is going to be a negative. My mu was 0 0.4, m was given to be 10, g is 9.8, cosine of the 20 degrees, times that distance that it traveled 5. And so this is a negative 0.4 times 10 times 9.8 times cosine of 20 and then times 5 and we would get negative, we'll call that negative 184 negative 184 joules let's take a look at part D what part D asks is what is the network before we talk about the network I do want to just mention something maybe what's the work done by my normal force Notice how your normal force, I know it's not part of the question, but it's very important because I've seen this on exams before. Notice how my normal force is actually perpendicular to the motion. It has no x component whatsoever. It is neither assisting nor is it opposing that motion. And because it neither helps nor opposes it, the work done by your normal force is just going to be zero. Okay, so in case they ask that, any force that is perpendicular to the motion so a force that is neither helping nor opposing it is always going to have a work of zero. Okay, let's take a look at part D. What is the network done on the system? The network done on the system, what that's going to be, it's going to be the sum of all the works done by all of the forces. And so what I'm going to do, I've got all the works done by all of the forces. It's going to be that negative 168 plus that 500 minus that 184. And so let's go ahead and throw that in. Negative 168 plus 500 minus 184 is 148. The net work done on the system is 148 joules. Let's take a look at part E. Part E says, what's the change in kinetic energy? Here's the thing. The net work done on a system, one of the most important equations in all of physics, the net work done on a system is equal to that system's change in kinetic energy. And so your change in kinetic energy would be the network, 148 joules. And then finally for part F, when it asks what is the speed of the crate after being pulled 5 meters, you're looking for that final velocity. And so your change in kinetic energy, 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mv naught squared is equal to 148, where our m was 10, vf is what I'm looking for, and then v naught was v naught. v naught was 1.5 from earlier, so 1.5 squared is equal to 148, and then after that, you just do a little bit of algebra. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 148 plus, adding that to the other side, uh, that'll be 5 times the 1.5 squared. So let's see, what does that come out to? 159.25, and so I have that 1 half times 10 is 5. 5 VF squared is 159.25. And then after that, just divide by 5 and take the square root. I trust you all can do basic algebra. Your VF would be, we'll call it 5.6. So your final answer that final velocity is going to be 5.6 meters per second. So don't overthink work and energy. Okay, Work is going to be force times distance, but it's got to be the component of the force, like this F, like the mg sine theta, like the mu times n, that points in the same direction as motion. You do positive work if it helps the motion, and you do negative work if it opposes the motion, just like that friction, just like gravity in this situation. If they ever ask what's the net work done on a system, you add up all the works done by all the forces, and that is equal to your change in kinetic energy. And I can utilize that to help find either my final or initial velocity. Okay? So don't overthink it. Um, hopefully this has helped with your conservation of energy and work, and I will see you in the next video.